All right, Rampage. We watch AEW Rampage, February, February 25th, 2022. Guevara versus Andrade for the TNT title. Had about five minutes of wrestling, then a commercial. I was not irritated because I got to see some, a decent portion of the match before the commercial break. So the they big thing in this match... commercial ma- at the heat, though. Just oh. like WWE. Yeah. Well, right. you know, I am coming off Raw 13 with that uh, match with... Uh, you know, Money Inc. and Beverly Brothers, mm-hmm. and they had the most bullshit commercial bullshit you ever saw. So I'm forgiving these guys. That actually is a good point. God. We'll tease that for next week's show, yeah. everyone. A, a commercial break during a Money Incorporated Beverly Brothers match. Two, come back next week. We will discuss it in detail. So the bad guys, uh, which is Andrade and Matt Hardy and the rest of their crew, they conspire to remove a turnbuckle pad. The match continues. Andrade tries to roll up with his foot on the ropes, and it sure looked to me like Matt Hardy just pushed it off the ropes. Yeah, They tried to tell us that, no, he was trying to hold it on to the ropes. And none of this matters, because Sammy kicked out, and the match just kept going. <laughs> so they're, doing, they're, they're having a, a, a fighting for like a superplex on the, on, over the exposed buckle, and Sammy uh, ends up escaping that, jumping under the apron. He kicks the leg out of Andrade's leg, so Andrade's face comes out onto the exposed buckle, and he collapses to the mat. And uh, I'm thinking, okay, now you do the finish, and you pin him, and that'd be that. And Sammy waits, and he waits, and he waits, and he waits, and eventually Andrade gets to his feet, and Sammy does the double jump cutter. But like 30 seconds went by, and I was certain Andrade was going to kick out. And I was wrong. (laughs) Sammy just pinned him. It was a fine little opener. It was nothing, uh, nothing special that you need to go out of your way to see. You know, I don't know who it was, uh, but I was backstage at the Defy show, and one of the one of the wrestlers was uh, talking about something, and he goes, "Just kick the leg out of the leg," and I fucking laughed because I thought like I was the only person that remembered that from like thirty years ago mm-hmm. and laughed my ass oh, off when no. Owen Hart said it. It will always be funny. Apparently, it's quite famous. But anyway, I always love when the heels. Uh, tried something dastardly, and it backfires on him. Of course, yes. So the bad guys exposed the buckle. El Idolo went into the buckle. By the way, all Matt Hardy's fault. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know where this is going, but, uh, you know, once once they got Jeff Hardy, at this point, like, whatever plans you had with Matt Hardy, unless they're, like, you know, very, very important plans, I think Matt Hardy is uh, going babyface with his brother. Who wants to see heel Hardy Boys? Yeah, like they yeah. need to do a babyface run. So presumably, like you know, Andrade will probably take over the Hardy family office, kick Matt out. Matt and Jeff go off on their own, have tag matches with these guys. I presume that's what's going to happen, but I guess we'll see. So Andrade does this infuriating thing, and he he's done it more than once. But he whips Sammy into the turnbuckle. Sammy takes the bump. Andrade sprints the opposite direction, bounces off the turnbuckle, and runs full head of steam at Guevara. Guevara dodges. Andrade hits the turnbuckle and then sells it. Yeah, why did you not (laughs) sell the other buckle, bruh? (laughs) Why did one uh, buckle not hurt, but the other buckle did? It doesn't make a lick of sense. It wasn't exposed. I I hate that spot. I completely hate it. Danielson does it too. The, the run real fast and hit the buckle and then bounce out. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why are you doing that? Mm-mm. At least Cesaro like runs and bounces off the buckle and then goes the other way. I'm not a fan of that bouncing out of the corner because no. they always do sell it later. They bounce yeah. out. They run really fast and hit the buckle to go the other way, and then someone throws them into the buckle and they sell it. Maybe yeah, it only like hurts it. if somebody dodges. I don't like it. So anyway, that's the opener. So afterwards, Matt goes after Sammy, and uh, Darby and Sting make the save. And it's funny, because <laughs> Isaiah Cassidy takes the most pointless flip bump for a clothesline ever. He's mm-hmm. in the ring. Sting is two feet behind him. He turns around, and Sting clotheslines him. All he's got to do is go down, but no. He must turn himself inside out and do the flip bump. Hey bro, you're Isaiah Cassidy. You're going to take a clothesline from Sting. You're going to do the fucking wackiest bump ever for this old guy. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, Darby does a coffin drop, and there you go. So there, that's the trio's match for the pay-per-view. Okay, so that's the only match I saw on this show. Brian, are we just going to review the pay-per-view next Sunday? Pay-per-view? There's a pay-per-view next Sunday. Yeah. What the a- fuck pay-per-view is it? AEW Revolution. That's next Sunday? Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. 
Okay. Well, uh, yeah. Then that'll be what we do on Sunday. Okay. Okay. Eight Nothing else? Rampage. Rampage as well, or just? Dude, watch Rampage just in case. But I presume we'll only do the paper. <laughs> maybe the paper will go short. Yeah. Maybe something important <laughs> yeah. will happen. On yeah, it. I'm sure that'll happen. Yeah. That's a very maybe all the matches will end early, and they don't have a standby match. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sure. Yeah. All right, I'm out of here. You guys have fun. I'm glad you guys are back and safe. I'll uh, talk to you on Sunday. Talk to you again, Craig. Bye, Craig. After a while. Bye. Oh, he's gone. He's going to miss you talking about Hook. Oh, damn, that's right. Hook's next. So QT Marshall comes out for a promo. Talks about all the disrespect he's been getting. Doesn't say who it's from at first. He just blames all this disrespect on Taz. Taz has no idea what he's talking about. And QT says, I try to teach him respect. I taught him to give the vets his chair, to shake everyone's hand. Every ounce of success this cold-hearted, handsome devil has had is because of me. I want him to come out here right now, thank me like the man I thought I trained you to be, or I'll drag you out by your hair and stretch you in front of your daddy. So Hook comes out. And- <laughs> this fucking QT is just the best heel. He was this. He was because he's got good lines, but like you know that he's full of shit. You know he's gonna get killed. Yes. And you just can't wait. Yes. And for the, for this for this yes. role, he's fantastic. So Hook comes out on the ramp, and QT sends students out to kill him, but instead Hook kills them. Does he? Classic ever. martial arts uh, hero villain dynamic here. The first dude, I don't know if he'll ever wrestle again. <laughs> God. <laughs> but. Hook like sidesteps him and grabs his arm over his shoulder and I don't know the technical name for it, but does a ba- very basic judo throw, pulling him by the arm over his shoulder, all fine and dandy except for where they are standing, which is the very edge of the stage. So this poor bloke's back comes down on the corner of the edge and the of the stage and the ramp. Oh Christ! I screamed so hard. Oh this poor fucker. He killed like five other dudes, but I'm sure they'll live. This this dude he killed is dead. So uh, there's one student left, and he saw that first guy take that bump on the edge of the ramp. Says, "Fuck that!" And he leaves. And Hook just casually walks to the back after killing a man. I hope he's okay. That guy who's dead. Yeah, I presume he's alive. I, I like, feel like it would have hurt if he broke his back. Yeah, it looked so bad. Well, it looks so. so bad. Don't bump on the corners of things, everyone. Flat surfaces are your friends. Lambert is there with Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page. He demands Scorpio Sky. He went to uh, Tony Khan's office, demanded that Scorpio Sky get a TNT title shot, which Andrade had one. He lost, so we need a new challenger now. Tony instead offered a qualifying match for the face of the Revolution ladder match, which, as Scorpio pointed out, you mean the same ladder match I already won? (laughs) That's a very, very good point. He says he's already the face of the revolution, and Lambert calms him down. He promises, I will get you a title shot before the winner. You, you will get but your if title shot. I'm, if, I'm, if I'm right, Vinny, he did win that, but he did eventually get a championship match, so, and he well, failed. I don't remember. So now you got to win it again, buddy. He might, but uh, <laughs> I, I thought the, the, the point that uh, he already won this ladder match was a strong one, and he says he's undefeated for 350-some days or whatever it is, so he must have gotten his title shot right away if he got a title shot and lost it. Regardless, Lambert promises that Scorpio Sky will get a TNT title shot before the winner of that joke of a ladder match gets his, and Ethan vows that Scorpio will get that TNT title. <laughs> Wardlow versus Nick Camarado went like five minutes, and probably three and a half was during commercial. So you think I'd be here to complain? Yes, he won the Face of the Revolution ladder match March 7th, and uh, the very next Wednesday he faced Darby Allen for the TNT title and uh, lost. Okay. And then he hasn't lost since. Well, he's earned another shot then. Although he did lose double or nothing in a tag team match. And at full gear in a tag team match. Doesn't do good on these pay-per-views. <laughs> it's Ethan's fault, I'm sure. The rest of the time he's doing all right. So Warlow versus Nick Camarado, as I mentioned, the vast majority of this went... There was a little bit of wrestling... A long commercial break and a little bit, little bit of wrestling. And I know you're probably all expecting me to rant and rave about how stupid this is. But listen, what we saw was so awesome, I don't care. Well, I, 60 I made best the same seconds of Haas warfare. If you want Wardlow to work a little bit longer in front of a live crowd, but you don't want it to be on darker elevation, that's fine. Have it be during the commercial. Violence before the break, violence after the break, done. Right? That's what we got. That's all everybody wants to see is the violence. A bunch of suplexes, 
Uh, just a ton of suplexes. We go to commercial. We come back. Nick Camarado is pressing Wardlow over his head with one arm. I know it's work. I understand how it all works. But Jeebus. And then Wardlow escapes. It's a big-ass one-headed choke slam. Hits four power bombs and wins. We saw maybe 90 seconds of this. It was awesome. You know, I don't want to complain about it because I don't really hate it that much. But the one-arm press slam spot to me is just so hokey. Because, like, obviously the the person being pressed is pushing down on the other guy's shoulders. They're doing okay? a push-up. You can you could like pretend you don't see that, but the problem is the guy that's pressing the other guy is off balance. So it's like it would be impossible to hold someone up with all their weight on one side. Uh, and you know it's funny. I mean, I'm sure uh, you know if if uh, Nick Camarota was on the cheerleading squad, he probably could do a one arm press if the guy is right in the middle of his hand, mm-hmm. not holding his knees. Somehow he's levitating sideways. We have seen... But people pop for it, so what can I say? We have seen at least three of these in this year. We saw this one. We saw Bianca do one in the chamber. And we saw Boogs do one in the Royal Rumble. And I believe... I fucking believe Boogs could probably do this unassisted. Boogs, the, the, I think it was to Madcap, actually, of all people. And again, it was he work. I'm not saying he was a shoot one arm press slam, but he was doing much less work than Bianca and uh, Camarado work here. Yes. Anyway, great Haas warfare. So afterwards, Spears is in the ring celebrating with Wardlow. He looks up, and Aaron Solo is climbing the top rope to dive onto them. And Spears does not warn Wardlow, nor does he do anything to stop Solo. He just tiptoes out of the way like a cartoon villain. May as well twiddling his mustache. And of course, Solo flies. Wardlow catches him. He's going to powerbomb Solo, but then Spears gets involved he hits Solo with a chair shot, which hurts Wardlow's fingers. He's pissed off. So Spears cuts a promo, and honestly, it was a pretty dang good promo. Not really short, but it was fun. He says, listen, I know you're upset, but I got to tell you, this Powerbomb Symphony, it's not getting over. That means popular. God. So he wants Wardlow now to just pin the man. It's one and done. It shouldn't take that much work. No more power bombs. Dude, Spears matches don't do nothing for me, but I like this character. This promo was fun. Him trying to tell this guy, you got to stop doing these power bombs, buddy. Yes. No one cares. Not working. Go back and do something boring. That's, that's exactly what he said. Yeah. Serena D versus Kayla Sparks. Went two and a half minutes. Serena killed her with a serenity lock. At least this one did not have a commercial break. But Serena continues to squash rookies, and I enjoy it. A Thunder Rosa Britt Baker contract signing. I thought this was good. Did you? I could tell by your voice. Yes. I thought, so I thought Britt Baker did a really good job here. Okay, well. Thunder Rosa said nothing. No. <laughs> Which I thought was fine, because I... Whatever. All right, so the, part of the thing is this whole show felt like it was on fast forward. There were like no entrances for any matches. They were zipping through this, zipping through that, and here's this contract signing, which I know it went like three minutes, but it was a long three minutes. So Thunder Rosa immediately insults her in Spanish and signs. And then Britt takes her mic, and it, I guess it wasn't bad, but it, it didn't add anything. I know you won that Lights Out match, but I made the match, whatever that means. And uh, she says, I was, a wrestling, I was a star on this show when you were wrestling on YouTube. You will never be the face of the company. You don't hate me. You love me. And uh, the crowd's sitting there dead the whole time until she gets to her catchphrase, and they all love to chant DMD, so there you go. And then Britt signs, and Thunder attacks, and there's a big brawl, and Mercedes puts Jamie Heater through a table. Hey, listen, it's true. They did that They did that match, and even though Thunder Rosa won, even though it didn't count, Thunder Rosa was the winner, but when it was over, all anybody was talking about was Britt Baker. And it was her face on the shirts, and yeah, this was all a shoot. I mean, this is what actually happened. So she's. Uh, they've turned that into a storyline that uh, Thunder may have got a win, but uh, the one that got over in the match was Britt Baker, and she's reveling in this. I thought it was good. I thought she was good. Mark Henry interviews Orange Cassidy and uh, the acclaimed. It's Orange versus Anthony Bones here in the main event in the Face of the Revolution qualifier. So before Henry can even ask a question, Orange wants to make something sure. He wants to make it clear. He doesn't have to climb anything tonight, does he? And Wheeler Yuta is there to say, no, no, no. The ladder match is on the pay-per-view. All you need to do tonight is wrestle Anthony Bones. And Orange is satisfied. Okay, he says, I can wrestle. I can beat Anthony Bones. Bones, of course, is very upset by this, this casual, nonchalant, cavalier attitude about their match. 
He talked about his looks. They compare him to Macklemore and Ryan Gosling and Ellen DeGeneres, all in the same promo. And then, of course, it's there's been enough talk. It's time for the main event. It's Anthony Bowens versus Orange Cassidy. Man, I was so excited for the rap, and I was totally let down. And it was really weird, and I couldn't figure out what the fuck happened. And apparently he did a... Uh, he had some line about Putin. Oh. And so they edited the rap. And gotcha. so that's why it came off so weird. It was like, because he has a very specific way of, um, you know, he's got the music and he comes out and he, he just kind of does his whatever. And he's waiting for the line in the music where it says the acclaimed. And that's his, that's his hook to, to, to his cue to start his rap. Yeah. And it was really weird the way that it was done. It was like, it was just weird. It came off like why. he couldn't hear the music and he was off. Well, what happened was it was edited. So yeah, yeah, that's that's what happened. So he did some rap. It was, I also would have edited that line. I don't even know what it was, but I also would have edited it out. Um, and uh, Caster then invites Orange to do a counter rap, a battle rap. And so Orange takes the mic, and his rap is he does his shtick with these slow motion kicks, holding the mic down by his feet. And this, of course, only serves to make the acclaimed even more mad. So I've seen Orange. Uh, brawl breaks out. I have seen Orange, of course, do the kip up with the hands in his pants, hands in his pockets. That's an important distinction. But uh, this one, he had one hand in his pocket and the other hand holding a microphone. And yes, I th- know that's an Alanis Morissette line, a very close to one. But somehow it looked even cooler that way. And he clears house, hits a big dive, tells the microphone, and just says, Word to your mother. And everyone cheers. So they did a match, and. I don't know. It was fine. It felt like every Orange Cassidy match I've seen. And uh, in the end, Dan Housen is there to distract Max Caster on the floor. So Orange hits the Orange Punch on Max. Gets to the ring, hits the Orange Punch on Bowens. He gets the win. And it's, it's fans pop for things. This was this was this still in Connecticut? I think so, yeah. Okay, this this felt very much like a WWE crowd in that they pop for entrances and catchphrases and finishers. They loved chaining DMD along with Britt, but they were dead the rest of that promo. Well, they're they're WWE fans. They were dead for most of this that's match until the finish. That's what they've yes. been trained to do. Yes. So, hey, at least they're drawing WWE fans At least fans they're there. Yes, that's but, the point. But uh, it made the match not a lot of fun to watch. And I thought it was good. Anthony Bones is really good. Yeah. And uh, the match is fine. And I believe this was the first ever match where Dan Housen's interference directly led to the finish. He's he's that's appeared, true. That's he's a appeared point. here and there, and uh, then he just kind of slinks off or whatever. And the match continues. But this was the very first time that he flat out distracted a guy, leading right to the finish. Yes. So and he ran, which I was happy to see because, you know, it was uh, I think it was right around Halloween that he uh, shattered his leg in two pieces, and uh, he'd he'd been back on his legs, but it was all walking. Uh, this time he actually ran a few feet. So hopefully his uh, his legs are getting better because that sucks. Yes, it does. I'd also be happy to see Dan House and Elvie. But there you go. That was Rampage. It was uh, not a terrible show, but it was missable, I think. I would say it was all right. One of the best Rampage I've ever seen. Died a death in the ratings. Mm. But that was because of the uh, news coverage. Although, if you listen to Observer Live today, same goddamn thing that happens every time. SmackDown and Rampage are both on the same night. SmackDown 8 to 10 and Rampage 10 to 11. Rampage got brutalized by the news. 47th place, I think it was. And uh, meanwhile, all those WWE fans, they're just fucking watching their SmackDown show. Yeah. Nothing deterring them. Yes. <laughs> so they're, they're number one in the time slot, 2.1 million viewers. And it's not an aberration. This has happened many, many times. I don't know why. But uh, God damn it, they're going to watch their fucking Johnny Knoxville. That's, that's what they're going to do. Favorite quote from The Simpsons. Can you do an impression? Sure. Okay, so uh, Bart was doing some road cleanup, and he said, Hey, Krusty, what are you doing here? And Krusty says, uh, It's all part of my glug, glug, vroom, vroom, thunk, thunk. <laughs> that was a very good impression, Craig. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's all part of my glug, glug, vroom, vroom, thunk, thunk. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.